Hello everyone, welcome back. This is episode two of the Teach Me PCB course. Now, when we left off at the end of episode one, we had grouped all of the components following the organization on the schematic. Now, in this episode, our idea is to go ahead and route these little subgroups individually, just preliminarily, kind of try to give them shortest paths, and then start placing them on the board. Now, one thing we want to keep in mind, and you're going to notice, is that in all of these little groups, there are test pads. Now, when making a test jig, one of the recommendations that we have from the partner is that all of the test pads should be on the same side, and they should be at least 75 mils apart. Now, because all of our components, we have this LCD is going to be on the top, we have some buttons, we have things like that. My initial idea is that we're going to go ahead and put those test pads on the bottom. And that's okay. The idea is that all the test pads should be on the same side. That's what's going to make it easy to do the test jig. So that's the premise that we're going to be working under. And I'm going to start making the different routes and trying to organize and moving things into position as I go through. Um, and then what we're going to see is now I'm going to go ahead and do the routing. I'll speed up the parts where it's just repetitive, but if there's something noteworthy, something that I think is worth talking about, you'll see that the video will stop. I'll talk about it and then it'll speed up again. And by the end of this video, we should have all the components placed and most, if not all of the routing done. So let's get started. Now, one thing that's good to be aware of while we do this is that Depending on the component, like for example, this is an LCD, and the LCD is going to be off the board a little bit, so I know that I can place some components under it. Again, I have to be careful. Got to make sure that they're not large. They're not like electrolytic caps or anything like that, but these surface mount resistors, I know I can place behind it, and it won't be a problem. So that's what I'm doing here in order to, to have nice short distance routes. I notice I'm not too concerned right now about how the labels are being placed. I'll worry about that a little bit later. Okay, excellent. So we have these all right. It's all looking pretty good. Now for these, I'm going to go ahead and use the mirror command and just put them on the bottom since we already decided that all of the test points are going to go on the bottom. And I'm making sure, obviously, to place them in such a way that I know that there's more than 75 mils between them. I'm going to check that center to center. These are okay. So I'll turn on my grid very quickly and we'll have a good idea if everything looks all right. So center to center, need to have 75 mils. I have more than that here. Same here, same here, same here. So this should be okay. okay and this is our first component ready. Now, again, I may change something here like maybe get this capacitor in closer. I'm going to go ahead and also review the data sheet for this. Make sure how much room I have below that I can put these resistors right beneath it. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this onto the board, make sure everything fits. So I'm going to make a selection. Now we're going to just, going to just drag it over. And hopefully it should fit. And if it doesn't, I need to make some changes. OK, 
Okay. So this is not bad, but he needs to be a little bit taller. So we'll go ahead and we'll switch to the 3D PCB. Gonna go ahead and edit the board shape, just make it a little bit taller. That's all we wanna do. Okay, so now we push it back. Now we see he's a little bit taller, which is what we want. And we just keep working with it like this for now. And we'll keep adjusting as we go. Now one thing that helps with visibility here is just turning off the values layer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that just to make things a little bit easier. On the finished PCB, you generally won't show values anyway. So this isn't a, a loss of information here. So I'll put OK. And that helps just declutter things a little bit. So as you can see, I've chosen to put kind of the USB circuitry here on, on this part of, of the robot's leg. And we may move it. We make some, make some adjustment. This is an initial placement. And again, like I mentioned before, all the test pads are on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and try doing the routing. Um, I may try and arrange some of the other parts first. So at this point, the, the, the order isn't strict. You can go ahead and kind of move and feel things out. Uh, but the idea is to keep the groups of connected components together, and then you can make adjustments as needed. Now, one thing that's good here is that you're going to see that there's a bypass cap, which from the schematic we see over here, C501. Now, with bypass caps, you really want to try to keep them as close to the component as you can. And that's what we're doing over here. I've kind of rearranged things a little bit to try to keep it close. So that's a key thing to remember. You want bypass caps to be as close to components as you can be. Again, as we mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, this layout isn't crazy critical, but we don't want to get into bad habits. So this is a good one to keep in mind. Bypass caps should always be as close as possible to the component. So just a little note here while we're doing the routing. One thing that can sometimes be a concern is you notice that these two pads here go to the same node. Now physically, this coin cell connector is automatically always connecting these two pads. So technically, you don't need to route both. However, we do want to be careful and just be extra safe. So I will route them both. But it's something to keep in mind. It's not always necessary. Sometimes in the definition of the component, it'll be defined in such a way that as long as either one is connected, the netlist will be happy. But in this case, that wasn't done. So just to be extra safe, I'm going to route one to the other. Okay. 
Now at this point, I've decided that I'm going to place this circuitry on the back of the PCB, a uh, little bit out of the way. So now I just have to figure out where we want to locate this this battery connector to make it easy to place. So usually it'll be near one of the edges, kind of similar to what I've done here to make the connectors easy to access. So I'll go ahead and make that adjustment now. So at this point, we have everything within the body of the PCB. Most of the little subsections are routed out already, so we've done some of the routing work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make planes on the top and bottom of the board. These are going to take care of any 3-volt uh, power rails as well as the ground power rail. So we're going to see a lot of these air wires start to disappear because of that. And the way we do that is we just right-click on the outline, convert to polygon, say copy, I'll say top. Okay, and you can see there the little red. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I select it. I'm going to change its name for the top. I'll make it plus 3v3. I'll hit enter. It will ask if I want to connect them. We say yes. It needs to be done in the schematics. So that means that I got the name of this signal wrong. Let's take a look. It's just 3v3. Okay, so we'll go over here. We have the polygon. It'll just be 3v3. And the reason I knew it was that is because you cannot create nets in a board that's already linked to a schematic. So now I hit enter. And it should be happy. This should be power, I believe, is what it was. So it should be OK. And now we can rat's nest it, and we should see everything that's on the top that's plus 3v3 should connect to it. Now here I use a fan out command to bring out all the ground pads, which is what I need to do to get them to connect to the bottom polygon. But as you'll see, I'll probably have to do some cleanup work here because we get, we get the breakout even on layers that don't need it. So that's something that we'll have to clean up. And I get here these doubling up of, of the pads, so I'll clean that up as well. But overall, it should be okay. So one thing here that's noteworthy is you're going to notice that even though we have a, a 3v3 polygon, we still have this air wire that isn't consumed by the polygon. That's because there's some islands in here that don't allow the copper, there isn't enough room for the copper to flow and make proper connections to all these points. So I'm going to have to hand route these in order to make sure that they're all connected to the plus 3v3 signal. But that's why that's showing up there, because these little islands get formed. So if I fill it in, and make sure we're looking at the top layer, you'll see that here, this pad's in an island. It's completely isolated. So I can probably correct that in this case. We're just moving this via over. So it'll solve that one. But we still have these other ones that need to connect, so I'll be doing those now. At this point, since I have the room, I just decided to make the legs a little wider. That way the polygon can fill better. And that'll make certain things a little bit easier. You won't always have this option, but if you do, it's good to leverage it. Now one thing that's kind of, that's very useful is if you take a route to a certain point, and then you decide that you want to see if the if the assisted routing tools can help, then once you reach that point, all you do is you press enter. I'm going to press enter and see if it'll finish it. Nope, it did not, but it's okay. 
doesn't always work. But it still takes me most of the way there. So we have some clearance issues here. We'll be fixing that as well. Let's go ahead and fix this if we can. There we go. Should I correct this? See if we can make them. There we go. Perfect. So I should take care of that. Hey, we have some other things to work out over here. Do we have an island here? Let me see. No, nope, should be happy. Now here we have a good opportunity to use push and shove because if I try to put in a V I can't but if I switch to the push and shove mode I can try to put it over here somewhere. So at this point we pretty much have a completed route. I'm going to run the DRC, make a few final checks. As you can see, we have some finished routed board. Now, a couple of things to note. You can see from the way I organized, I had to break these out carefully. There was a use of some push and shove routing. We've been able to maintain the requirement on all the test pads to keep a 75 mil spacing minimum. It's going to make it easier to test. All of the test probes are on the bottom side, as we mentioned earlier. And now at this point, we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. So thank you for joining me on this journey using Fusion Electronics and Eagle to be able to route this badge. And I really hope that the lessons are valuable for you and that you enjoy making your own badge. Have a great day.